Your higher self, the universe at large, lines up with that vibration and becomes it exactly. Psychic fraud news, because whether you believe in this bullshit or not, it is still not real. It is still a lie, even if you believe the fucking lie. If you focus positively in an aspect of appreciation towards something that is in the now, it's the same as telling your higher self that what you want is now, and so your higher self joins you where you are, and there's no gap between you and your higher self, no gap between you and your desires. Magical thinking is fairly harmless in small doses, but in bigger doses you spend so much time wishing for things to come true and trying to access certain spiritual powers, you don't actually move forward with your actual life. My gift doesn't work that way. Look, clairvoyant powers don't kick in until we get an approval on your credit card. I usually read quite a few articles a week on uh, psychics, cold reading, and other relating topics. And here's one for you to check out, which will be linked below. It talks about some of the obvious ways in which we can be fooled. And if you're a person who's a believer, who's making it fit, you'll be fooled a lot easier. It's extremely easy to do cold readings. All you need to do is basically throw out general information, so-called Barnum statements. The feedback you get from the person you're reading, you use that to make the reading even more specific. And then of course, when you get misses, you can change it by trying to find where it fits or where they're allowing it to fit. The easiest thing of course, is that these people who come along to the shows, one-to-one -one readings or spiritualist churches, they're usually believers. Therefore, they're after a reading, they're wanting to make it fit, and of course, they make it fit. I spoke about this woman in the past, a woman called Rose Marks, and she basically scammed 25 million off her clients over the course of years. Had people, including a famous author, going to see her regularly and paying her large amounts of money for bullshit. And basically, this woman had not only a luxurious lifestyle as a result, also a gambling addiction, enjoyed large houses, and of course, exotic cars. Just to know that your money's going to the right place. Because you'd expect these psychics not to actually need to gamble, for one, and if they did, you'd think they'd win. But also, you'd expect them to have a higher spiritual standard, wouldn't you? You'd expect them to be of high moral standing, giving their money to charity, helping out their fellow man. But instead, what do you find? They spend it on themselves and their future, living in big homes, fancy cars, and continuing the scam because it pays pretty damn good. That's what they're after in the end. Big houses, fancy cars, the luxurious lifestyle. Mediums who claim to read celebrities have the easiest job in the world because the information is out there. A lot of their personal life is public information. In the case of Sally Morgan, well, her clients are very public. They're in all the gossip magazines, for fuck's sake. In terms of Craig Hamilton Parker, when he did his channeling of Princess Diana, the solid information was public knowledge and the rest was based upon cold reading, Barnum statements and making it fit. As for Derek Acora, the same thing with his seance, where he allegedly channeled Michael Jackson, trying to communicate with Michael Jackson and pass on information to people who knew him who were in the seance. It's the same old tricks. They either have prior knowledge or they use cold reading, or the combination of the two. It's simple, it's easy, and yet people get fooled by this bullshit act. I'd like to welcome you again to my webcast. It's always such a joy to be with you. Between the phone readings that can run into the hundreds of dollars, the 45 books and consulting fees, her evil empire rakes in profits estimated to be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. 